Another way to tackle data is what I call a variables analysis. It's to explore the number and nature of the variables being presented. How many variables do you have and what is the level of measurement? In introductory statistics, one is usually either exploring basic statistics, running correlations, or comparing means. In a more advanced course, this might not be a appropriate approach, but in a basic course, there's only a few things you can do and data is usually organized into tables. And each column is one variable, and each row is usually an individual data value. It's not always true, but in introductory statistics, this is almost always true. So do read through chapter 12.2, uh, take a look at it, and take a good look at these charts that are in 12.2. What they're telling you is, depending on the layout of your data, there's really only certain things you're likely to be able to do. If you've got your data is in a single column, the variable is going to be in the first row, the data is underneath it, the variable and the units. And all you're going to be able to do is basic statistics. You may be able to look for outliers, IQR outliers, that's interquartile range outliers on a box plot. You may be able to do a histogram. You can undoubtedly do a 95% confidence interval if you have at least five data points. And if you have some value you know that it should be, then you can certainly run a uh, confidence interval test. If you have two columns, there's a about three different things you could probably do with two columns of data. If the variables are different, variable one and variable two are different units, they're different variables in the head of your column, then you might be looking at paired data and you may be looking to see whether one variable predicts the other variable. Uh, if the same variable is in both columns, if the two variables are the same, as you see here, the two variables are the same, uh, then you may be looking at something such as a paired t-test, especially if the two variables are the same uh, and one is before and one is after. It's probably a paired t-test. If there's two independent samples, uh, then you're probably looking at an independent t-test. Uh, and finally, over here, if there are two columns of unequal length, then you're probably looking at an independent samples t-test, if the variables are the same. If they're not the same, then you're probably looking at something more complicated. But in introductory statistics, that will hold. And you should read through chapter 12.2. There's a good bit to read here. Uh, but uh, it takes you through different situations, including multiple variables at the same unit and uh, some of those charts you saw in, a, in an earlier video. So this is a good, a, good, uh, a good read through that you should probably do in preparation for your next assignment. Here I'm going to take some data. What you're looking at here is data that tells you the rate at which a jump rope jumps this is in jumps per second. This rate is at jumps per second. And how many jumps they did. This is a school contest. Whoever jumped the most jumps would uh, win a prize. And so they were, if you, if you missed a jump, if you tripped on the rope or missed a jump, you fouled out. And uh, you can see the winners down here. It was 111 was the winner. And what you're looking at on the first column is a different variable. So these two variables are not the same. This is a rate, jumps per second. This person here is jumping at two jumps per second. This person here is jumping at one, uh, sorry, one jump per second. This person's jumping very slowly. They're doing uh, only one, uh, one, uh, uh, one third of a jump per second. So it's taking them about three seconds to do one jump. So they're doing one jump, two jumps. You might think that's the right approach. Go really slowly, and that way you won't trip on the rope. But you might note they didn't actually do that well. My hypothesis would be that you want to go slow in order to not trip on the rope. If you go too fast, you'll mess up. So let's see. That's just my hypothesis in my head. I'm thinking to myself. Let's go have a look at this. Well, I've got two columns, equal length. You can see that here. And they have different variables. And the, the question that would be asked is, it, it, it's not here on the sheet, but would have been asked in the preface is, is there a relationship between these uh, two variables? 
Well, let's go see. About the first thing I'm going to do to see if there's any relationship is toss in a chart and see what I get. I've got a scatter chart. I can see that down in the type. That's good. I'm going to get rid of that legend. It doesn't do me any good in this case. I've got count rate very nicely all set up for me. Uh, I've got a beautiful chart here all already done by Google Sheets. That's useful to me, but not. Uh, it doesn't yet tell me whether there's a relationship. It certainly isn't some straight line where everything's on the line. But that doesn't mean there's no relationship. Whenever you're looking at a chart like this, you always want to kind of look at the, the layout of the data. Uh, and I can see in the upper left corner, by the 125, that there's no dots up there. That at really low rates, nobody got a high number of jumps. But I can see as the jumps went up, and I can see that over here. As the jump rate went up, as the jumps jumped faster, they actually did tend to score more jumps, to complete more jumps. So this isn't working the way I thought it was, where slow and steady might win the game, but it's working uh, a little differently. Well, let me uh, don't move that. I'm just going to play with it a little bit, size it around. I'll go ahead. I want to keep track of what's in what row. Whoops. Yeah, move that around. Uh, this is row 27, A2, so I go down to row 27. I want to know that because I'm going to do some basic statistics. Now that it looks like maybe there's a relationship, I'm going to go after my relationship statistics. A, B, C, slope, and I'm going to put in here, notice it's the Y data than the X, don't forget that. So this is going to be B3 to B27, comma, A3, full colon to A27. Yep. A. Oh, sorry, not three. I messed up. Two. Edit it, fix it, make it right. I doubly messed up. Retype this in. A2 to A27. I can see if it's right by looking at that red block that's been selected. Very nice. It's showing me whether or not I've selected all my data, and I have. So there's my slope. The slope is positive. That means there's a positive relationship here. That's useful. I'll go ahead and type that that's the slope. That might be useful to have later, the word slope. Uh, the, let's. I'll go look at the intercept. I don't know that the intercept will mean much, but it might. So, there are cases where the intercept has meaning. I don't think it does in this case. Again, backwards, B2 to uh, B27. Is that all? Yep, that's all of them. Comma, A2 to A27. Close that parenthesis, enter. About negative 6. Close to zero. That's If you look at my chart, that's really close to zero on my chart. That's probably not particularly meaningful in this particular case. What that means is if you somehow hit a rate of zero, you'd have a negative count. That's kind of meaningless. I suspect if your rate is zero, your count would be zero because you aren't jumping. So that's probably spurious. Spurious means false, not probably a real result. The most important statistic is going to be the correlation. I'm going to put that here. The correlation R. The correlation coefficient R. Equals the corel. Again, the Y data, comma, the X data. So, same thing, B2, full colon. It's just easier, I find, these days to go ahead and type these in. You could drag, but I keep missing when I drag. And so B2 to B2, A2 to A2. I get a correlation of 0.58. Now it's kind of hard to see. That's of interest to me. That's a moderate. That correlation is moderate. So I've got a positive relationship. That's interesting. It's a positive relationship. And it's a moderate. It's not low. It's not weak. It's moderate. So that would be my strength there. Let me label these so I can see strength. All right. And... This is the nature of the relationship, whether it's positive, negative, or neutral. It's a positive relationship. It's moderate. 
Uh, and so that's telling me that this uh, there is a connection. The faster you jump is moderately correlated to the uh, number of jumps you're able to make. Just for completeness, I'll go ahead and calculate that coefficient of determination. Oh, determination. There we go. Mm, sorry, for coefficient. I'll abbreviate that, coefficient of determination. I guess we'll have to shrink that out over something. Okay. Yep. And that's just going to be equal to the correlation coefficient. Uh, let me go find the, uh, I think, got to go find that symbol. <laughs> Squared. So what that's telling me is that 34% of the variation seen in the rate data accounts for the variation being seen in the count data. So there, there is this linkage between the two. They're coupled, about 34% coupling between the two data columns. It's a moderate correlation, and they are connected together. They tend to uh, move together. Uh, so that, that's, an un, that's a result that wasn't really... Uh, I can't say I was expecting that. There's some of that. Okay, so I've got some data. I've got a chart. Now, I want to get this over to slides, and that's a little bit different on a phone because uh, if you watch, I'll make another video on a laptop. It's a little different how you do these two things, uh, and I'm certainly still a learner at this myself. One of the things I've learned is that I'm going to have to make a screenshot of uh, this. That didn't work. Um, I'll have to do this and do my screenshot differently. You probably will not be able to see me making the screenshot because screen capture software does not capture screen capturing. So I'm making a screenshot, and you probably can't see that. But I've uh, screenshot saved a picture of my uh, data. And I'm going to go ahead and select my table here. I'm going to try to copy and paste that. So I'm going to copy that over. Now I'm going to go get a slide presentation. I guess I better come down all the way to here. Go to slides. I'll get myself a new presentation. This will be, I can uh, call this maybe jump rope. Um, Jump rope study. Uh, all right, I got that in. I need another slide here, so I'll add a slide at the bottom right corner. Uh, let me just add a title only slide. Uh, I'll try to put the data on here. Data. This could be tricky, but let me try. Uh, I don't want to add a comment. Um, Okay, so sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Just, well, I'm not trying to do that. Hold on. Back out, back out. I got to do a back out. I, I cancel at the top. I want to do a paste. There we go. Paste. That's what I wanted to do. It's a learning experience. It's a learning. Oh, those are really tiny. Okay, let me try to see if I can't make them bigger. Mm. Format. Text, font, size, up, bigger, bigger, bigger. Oh, that's nice. There we go. That looks a little better. So that's got the data in there. Check at the top left corner. There we've got a data sheet. It's a little ugly. I could use a theme here somewhere. But we'll come to that in a moment. Now, remember I made a screenshot of the, of the chart? You don't do it that way in the... Uh, the uh, uh, laptop scatter graph. I think scatter brings better to us. Good choice. Scatter graph. You might think you could insert from here, but you can't. Not currently. They may later add that capability. But the trick we use of inserting from a spreadsheet is not available to us. In fact, I can't insert a chart at all from here. But I can insert an image from my photos. 
and I did save that scatter graph as a picture. I did a screen capture. Every phone does a screen capture differently. I can touch my screen with three fingers and get a screen capture. I can use the down volume and the power button together to get a screen capture. But that'll get me a screen capture. It'll be uh, nice to have a format here. I wonder what we can do to this thing for formatting. Maybe I can't, maybe I... Change the theme. Ah, good. Some, this part of this course, for those of you using a phone, is definitely going to be an explore and learn section. Much as I'm exploring and learning uh, as I go. It's still apparently loading some of these. Hey, I recognize them. Whoa. There we go. And that you can now do this with a phone is fairly amazing. Now, bear in mind, I've downloaded the Google Slides app. I'm actually in the Google Slides app. And so I'll tell it to, ah, oh, and it applied the theme. Now you'll notice my, uh, okay, um, let's put in something here so it looks nicer. So it's added a theme, it's got that. Now I'll need one more slide. And this time I'm gonna go ahead and add one that has a title and body. Because what I'm going to have here is I'm going to have the discussion. Um, double tap. The uh, data showed a moderate correlation. A moderate, let's go ahead and tell it what the nature was. A moderate positive correlation. This suggests that jumping faster yields higher total jump counts than jumping slower. And I could probably beef this up with a bit better explanation, but you get the idea here. So I can actually do my presentation on my phone. Now, you'll be accessing this from Schoology. You'll actually be working on this from your Schoology itself. You're given a blank presentation there. You're given a link to the data to work with. And you'll have to analyze the data, come up with your own conclusions, move it to the presentation, and then present your results. You'll submit it. But on Wednesday will be a chance for you to practice presenting on teleconferencing, on Zoom. This is a real common thing to do these days in business, education, and many other fields where you have to give a presentation on Zoom. This is a, a, a part of the modern era. So if you have a look at your uh, statistics course, you'll see here in 12, uh, you've got a 12-2 uh, and you'll have to wait as I have to wait. But on Wednesday, I'll set aside some time midweek I'll get details to you later for you to log on and just try sharing your presentation. Screen sharing, we call it. It'll, I'll have to probably help talk you through it, but there's a little button at the bottom. It'll let you share your screen, at least on a laptop. I don't know about the, if you're working solely from a phone, I'm not certain what will happen, uh, but we'll f kind of figure it as we go. This is kind of a learning experience for both of us because... Like many faculty, I've long used desktops and laptops, but I'm learning to use just my phone so I don't have to carry around my laptop. So you'll see here there's a rubric. At the bottom, there's a link to the data and a link to the textbook. Um, this is this global warming happening here at home. That will take you to the, uh, to the spreadsheet that you, has your data. You'll have to copy that to another 
to another uh, spreadsheet. You won't be able to edit the original because that's the original that everybody's going to be accessing. So you won't be able to edit that. But you will be able to uh, copy the data. You can see the data here. It's uh, You'll be looking at... Ignore the years. The years are cute. They just tell you what year the data is. But the core question is whether there's a relationship between the Mauna Loa data and the temperature here on Pompeii. This is the high temperature for that, uh, the average high temperature for that year. Uh, all of this data exists all the way back to 1959. Um, and so you've got data all the way back to 1959 up to 2018. The 2019 data, I haven't tried to uh, compile that data yet. So we're just looking from 2000, 1959 to 2018. And the average high temperature, this is the average max temperature during that year. And, uh, I mean, people keep talking about global warming. Uh, does, is the temperature even changing on Pompeii? Is it hotter now than it was in 59 on average? And uh, this is the carbon dioxide in parts per million in the atmosphere as measured at Mauna Loa. That's the global measuring point for carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. That one we know is going up. It's just going up, 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 up. We can see that. It's going up. It's been going up ever since uh, the last century. But the question is, is there a relationship between these two variables? There's a lot of links over here, so you can get up to speed on the data. So a big part of statistics is getting up to speed on the data. We always have to get up to speed on what the data is and means. You can't just dive in and start running any random calculation. You're going to have to know what this carbon dioxide in parts per million is. You're going to have to try to understand some of the... You know, this is data in Fahrenheit. That's a temperature. Uh, and then so there's some sources. These are my two sources that the data came from. You can look those up. You can watch some of the history of global warming. Or learn about the Keeling curve, impact of climate change. Uh, this one here is uh, kind of just for fun because I'm a senior citizen myself. Uh... 2018 IPC special report on impacts of global warming and current CO2 levels, some stuff like that you can take a look at just to uh, just to educate yourself on the data. But you're looking for whether there's a relationship between this data and this data. Everybody talks about global warming. Well, if the globe is warming, is Pompeii warming? Uh, and this is was data I pulled up for the class here in Pompeii, but I could pull up similar data for Chuk or Yap or Koshrai. I haven't done that. Uh, Koshai has some data problems. They didn't always record the temperature data. Pompeii has some of the best temperature data going back the farthest right now of all the islands. They've got really good temperature data. So it makes it easier to use. Well, that's the data that you access from, from here. And what you're given is a blank presentation. You can see that here. To open that presentation on your smartphone, you're going to have to have the slides, the slides application, the one you see here. I have done Google Slides. You can look it up in the Play Store, and it, it will give you the. Uh, you'll need that to open the blank presentation and edit it on your phone, as you saw me doing here. My untitled, currently untitled presentation. I didn't give it. You don't have to give it a title. It'll be automatically titled from Schoology. Your only title you have to give it is on your screen right here, this this title here. So it's a pretty simple layout for a relationship. You, you'll be dealing with the temperature and carbon dioxide levels, and you should be wrapping up your presentation with something to tell me about. Well, is global warming happening? Is it related to carbon dioxide? Do you have some connection? I mean, if the temperatures are getting higher, I should see it on some kind of chart, no? And this one's a bit difficult. Uh, I, I'm aware of that. Be careful on the scale. You may have to adjust the scale on your graph. Uh, and and uh, don't just trust your eyes. You'll probably have to go after the slope, the intercept, and the correlation. Run the correlation. Don't just look at it, because just like that Trump rope, it looked like a mess. But when I ran the correlation, boom, there's a correlation. When I ran the slope, positive. 
I had a positive slope. I had a moderate correlation here. So that looks like a mess. But the reality is right here. There's a positive slope. The jump rope, as jump rope rate goes up, the count does go up. And the connection is a positive one with a moderate strength. It's not strong, but it's also not non-existent. There's a real connection here. About 34% of the variation in the jump rope rate explains the total count. So these are key statistics to run when you start looking at the, uh, the uh, temperature and global warming. There will be some, on the, I, I'm fairly certain that on your uh, phone, the graph will probably not look like there's much there. So you're going to have to go back and run the statistics. These are the key values in a relationship that you're going to need to look at to sort this guy out. And that's a bit of introduction to exploring relationships in variables. I'll see what you can do with it, where you can take it. What's going on with the data that you see there?